Hello and welcome back to the HH Gaming Podcast brought to you by hellhades.com. Uh, today we're joined by a uh, member of the Braid community, YST, who is another content creator. Um, it's been on the scene for quite a while now. I think probably about a year ago, people were sort of saying you were the new kid on the block with the content that you're creating, but now it's kind of ingrained yourself within, I, I guess, the content creation um, yeah. community. Um what was it that kind of got you into creating content, I guess, for Raid and just gaming in general? Yeah, it's weird because when you talk about like PC games, I kind of class Raid as more of a PC game now, the time it takes to play every day. But um, basically, when I first ever started, I was more of a console player. So Rainbow Six Siege is kind of like my forte with like Call of Duties and stuff Sick like game. this. <laughs> but um basically when i became a dad it's like i can't i couldn't dedicate the same time that i was to console games because you gotta sit there and play with a controller right mm -hmm. so i thought let me just try a mobile game and obviously i really loved world of warcraft back in the day that was like probably the only pc game i fully like, dived into <laughs> yeah so basing mm -hmm. off that kind of like the graphic style the orcs and all of these things and the mages i was like it came up on the app store as like a top search and i was like let me just try this out and it just suited my lifestyle perfectly. And then a few years later, here we are doing Raid videos. <laughs> so that's how it so, goes. So when, when was it that you actually started playing Raid? I, I started about three years ago. Oh, so wow, three, okay. three years ago, September was the first time. But wow. it, was, it was odd because I really wanted to start content, right? Um, way before I actually did. But like many people do, you get scared to start. You're like, yep. oh, maybe my friends might laugh at me or <laughs> my family doesn't like this or whatever. But... Yeah, do, I've actually been you, watching it for a long time. Do you, do your friends know that you make content for this game now? Yeah, yeah. Now now everyone does. I'm used to it. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes do you know the like when your out. wife's in the other room and you're just like trying to like hide your voice and it's like <laughs> yeah, 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 it's yeah. one of them ones. So, yeah, yeah I I get it. Um, because I I've got two young kids myself. Um, yeah. And they love the fact that I do like occasionally Twitch and YouTube and obviously the website and things like that. Um, but at the same time, any time it comes to like going live or recording or anything like that, it's like the doors shut. I just, yeah, just try and keep it. Yeah, super it's quiet. it's really hard. Like, like yeah, like you're saying, like they, they like they love all the YouTube stuff. They're like, mm -hmm. they copy what I see in my intro. Like, what's up, <laughs> what's up dad? Why is he here? <laughs> that's, Legend. Yeah, dad's recording. Be yeah. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> just see them running in the background and uh, <laughs> behind yeah. the green screen, pushing it over. Yeah. So are, are you, uh, is this your full-time thing now? You just... It has, it wasn't full-time and it still isn't at the moment. Okay. But I was going to make the huge announcement on my channel, but I actually am going full-time as in two weeks Ooh. from now. Juicy, so, juicy gossip, guys. So basically <laughs> my whole channel has been built off like, whenever. so whenever my kids go to school or nursery, I kind of film and edit in that time period. Yep. So it's really hard to like branch out on collabs and streams and takeovers. So I've not really dabbled into that as of now. But then looking forward, I'm kind of excited to see how full-time creation will be able to take mm -hmm. it and how much videos I can pop up. It's, it's, it's a big step, but at the same time, the amount of freedom that it gives you. Um, I mean, yeah. you know, from, from me personally, I went from, I was working full-time for a, a web development agency. And then, you know, I just so happened to stumble into uh, working with Hell Hades and working on his stuff. And uh, he talked me into actually making the step to, to go full-time when my girlfriend was getting really ill. Um, and yeah. I kind of needed something as an option if uh, I was going to end up being, you know, a, a, a single dad. And, you know, luckily it, it paid off, you know, um, yeah. but it is scary going from, you know, having a stable full time job to working for yourself, running a company, because even, you know, individual creators, you're still effectively running a business yourself. You need that mentality of i need to get up i need to work i need to put the videos out um you know need to go live and as well as that you need to be coming up with the creative side of things where you know you're keeping your community engaged and and it's is is a big step and i i commend to anybody who yeah. who who makes that step it's um, definitely like it was something that i've been thinking about for a long time but then obviously my channel's not the biggest in the world so it's just <laughs> like it's that gamble like some videos might get 20 30 000 and then the other ones yeah. will get 2 to 3 000 so trying to have that stable, yeah. like knowing that you're getting this income all the time, is mm -hmm. it really varies, right? Mm -hmm. But um, it is so, a big gamble, like taking a risk to like sex, like that comfy lifestyle, like you're saying. Like I was shaking, like handing in my notes, like <laughs> just take it, like I'm closing my eyes, take it. Did you tell them what you were going to do? I didn't know. Awesome. None of us no. do. 
yeah I, I, don't, do. I don't know i think i think i think uh how hades did actually um <laughs> I, I remember, I, yeah 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 because yeah. uh he he obviously he he was a senior sales rep for a massive organization um and was you know earning a lot of money yeah and, and to walk into the office and be like i'm gonna go make uh videos Video on games. computer games <laughs> It's so funny because yeah. when I first started watching um, Hell Hades, I think I've told him this as well. He actually had no camera. And I was like, mm-hmm. his face reveal was like the biggest thing ever. <laughs> when he popped out, I was like, there's no way this is Hell Hades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The equivalent yeah. of like Raid's dream reveal, right? Dream yeah. SMG yeah, reveal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was so funny. I was just listening to this voice and just thinking every time I'm watching, I'm like, who can this guy look like? Yeah. But yeah, man, Hades crushed it. And I think the biggest thing with, um, with our industry as well, which adds another sort of fear factor, is the tech industry, the gaming industry, tends to be so fluid that like you don't know what's going to happen like yesterday yeah. to today, the next day. I mean, yesterday, we're going through a wave at the moment in the tech industry between like Facebook and Twitter of massive like layoffs. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure you can put Twitter in the mix right now. I think they're but, going down. I mean, it's not even <laughs> Twitter. Eight pound for a blue tick. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah, actually yeah. look behind the scenes, yeah. you see Netflix loss, you know, cut a lot of this stuff. You had Lyft yeah. cut a lot of this stuff. Yeah. You had... Facebook yesterday announced in Meta they've cut a lot of their stuff. You've had like the FTX crash. So crypto is all of a sudden like six months ago, 12 months ago, crypto was like the thing. Everything was great. You had huge jobs. Now crypto is kind of like dying. And I think that's yeah. as a fear factor. For us. Yeah. You know, we, it's always like when I, I, I was in a very like very secure job. I was pretty comfortable, worked there for eight years. We poached him. And I was, I, <laughs> you know, you always have that thing of when you're in a job for that long, you kind of say, oh, do you know what? Maybe I should change. You know, I want to want a different career path. There wasn't really a career path I chose. You stumble into it as you do in life, right? You things happen to you. You end up stumbling into jobs and you get stuck a little bit. And when you're kind of trying to make that decision, you're almost like, well, on the on the positives, I get to do some fun stuff, but I don't know how like secure it is. I'm giving yeah. up security for something that may not be so secure. But I think generally, from my experience, moving from you know, what I would call like a typical office type of job, right? Where you basically work kind of nine to five, even though I'd work like eight to eight or something stupid like that into this kind of job where it's like, I don't really see like weekdays, weekends, hours, days, you kind of work to your own schedule and what fits you and you have the flexibility. You kind of make what you do of it, right? The harder you work, the better you get out of it. Yeah. Because even though, you know, you you know, I work part of the team, it's still kind of like that self-employed mentality you have to have where you have to manage your own time. You have to figure out, you know, if I put more effort into it, then I'm going to get better rewards out. If I don't, if I want to like a cozy basic lifestyle, these type of jobs like content creators, you can't do that. You can't just walk into it and go, I can put a video out, five minutes, yeah. job done. And yeah. that's a misconception we get a lot. People just ask, creating videos is easy. No, it's it's, it's really not. <laughs> it, it's really hard. And especially yeah. like you have to make sure you're putting the right information out there as well. That's like a big thing because yeah. you slip up one sentence or one word, you'll mm-hmm. get penalized in the you. comment section. Yeah. They'll come after you. The comment se- yeah. section is brutal. <laughs> yeah. I, do you know what? Do you know when I first started, I was so close to quitting YouTube. Mm-hmm. And um, I want to give a big thanks to Deadwood Jedi as well, because he probably doesn't even know this, but there was a time where I was like really down and I wasn't getting views. And you know, when you're starting YouTube and it's like, I'm putting out the same videos as these other creators. And like, why am I not getting the traction? Like, cause I didn't, I was just blindsided to algorithms and stuff. Yep. And um, yeah. Yeah. Then Deadwood Jedi actually commented on one of my videos. Right. But he didn't realize how much that meant to me because I love clan boss. And he was like the one that I looked up as a creator as well. Yeah. So him doing that single comment, he might not have realized it, but he actually drived me to like, keep going. Awesome. And that was like a dark time in me trying to like pursue this anyway. So I, I think great. as well as that is it's an incredibly lonely uh, job to be in. I think, uh, and that's probably something that people underestimate when you're actually in front of all these people talking and telling people uh, information and creating content, you're actually just in a room on your own trying to figure out what people are going to want to watch. Um, and I think that's actually one of the perks, I guess, of the raid community is I've never known a community where the content creators especially work so hard to support each other um, yeah. and create this like environment where everyone's trying to pull each other up um, and, uh, you know, grow everyone's channels. It's, it's, it's not, you know, uh, Hell Hades obviously is one of the biggest content creators. Obviously, we've got Ash as well. Yeah. Um, but both those guys, they don't see anyone else as competitors they just see them as as, as colleagues and you know um 
it, it's a case of you know they're, they're not afraid to promote anybody else's work um mm. at the same time you know we've got content creators literally on a weekly basis collabing with each other yeah. um obviously we run um hellhades.com um but uh, in, inside of hellhades.com we've got cold brew scratch um ivy lee does work for us as well um so it's it's a whole like community of people who are just kind of pushing this community forward um which i think is is a massive benefit versus almost any other game that i can think of in fact i can't think of another game uh at least from my experience where the, the content creators work together like they do in this in this one so um yeah i think we're very lucky to be in the place that we are um and at the same time we we're, we're very lucky to have the community and the community figures around yeah. us um what, that we have what i really like about it is as well that every creator is very different and mm -hmm. i feel like whenever whichever channel you go to like for me personally i go to hh gaming to get learning like like from a personal standpoint i was mentioning to not from me from paul <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well yeah we'll see that a little bit a little bit on his side but, you, you come um, to my channel to watch 30 minutes of confusion and then go oh, so that's why it was doing it so um i mean i guess that's kind of a background into where you are with content yeah. creation and and your goals moving forward um let's let's talk a little bit about raid um and i guess what what areas of the game do you do you specifically enjoy uh playing like what's what's your focus i guess um in in um, raid for me it's mainly pve content that's kind of where what keeps it fresh for me so when a new bunch of champions come out especially from a creator standpoint being able to showcase how they can affect a mid game or early game player and the impact how one champion can really change a roster mm -hmm. and same with like unique kits so the champions that people kind of kick down such as like a Canelia will be like a famous one um I was about to mention that I, I, Canelia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if I anyone of... doesn't know, YST is the founder of the Canelia Bommel solo strategy. He was, uh, yeah, he actually uh, went funny story just as a sidebar before you sorry to interrupt you. Um, the I actually tried to, as and we were talking about this last night, try to actually get it to work for 90, and it's really quite hard to find the right window. I think so it's impossible. Me and Seth were speaking on a club earlier, like blessings might be the way to do it. We'll, we'll have to try it out, but. In terms of like one champion to solo five different Doom Tower bosses, because I didn't just do Bomber, I did Griffin, I did Eternal Dragon. Oh, did you? I, did I didn't every, catch that. Every, I did the Scarab King. Every single boss in the Doom Tower I soloed of her. But that was the highest flaws. <laughs> Bomber was the only one I couldn't get past 50. Yeah. But, um, but a lot of champions can't, right? Because there's like Berengarian. Yeah. There's a couple others that can do to 50, but 90 is kind of like It's very odd because with, with the bosses in general, like the thing that kind of messed that one up for me was... I didn't encounter that the dread bomb speed doesn't change from normal and hard. It just remains at 75 it remains speed. The same. A lot of so, allies are like that. Because the bomber himself goes up in speed and they remain the same, it's impossible to find that gap like you do in floor 50. So that was kind of the issue on that. But yeah, uh, apart from yeah. apart from that, I kind of enjoy like like I was saying, dungeon stuff. I really like the iron twins. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm probably a weirdo like that. Yeah, I, don't I was gonna like, say that's rare. <laughs> I, I don't like the rewards. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I think I feel like the rewards are complete trash, but I really enjoy like fiddly crafting teams in my own spare time. It is really gear intensive if you want to go like the resistance route and stuff like that. But for me, like taking geomancer out of the equation and fiddly crafting teams in that sense is what I enjoy, even though it's longer. And of course, the clan boss is like the main thing on my channel. So I really enjoy that as well. Exactly. Clan boss is really fun. I, I, it's funny. I actually had someone, I was doing a live stream earlier and uh, Fender is no YST. I think you're doing live streaming on YouTube like, like, yeah. like I am basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you know catch him out keep an eye on his channel he'll be going live uh, i don't know have you got a schedule when you go live i pretty much do it um once every two weeks for cbc but then um if i want to do something in particular like a daily grind stream just to chat or building a clan boss team or something like that then i'll just hop on as yeah. well just jumping in there out of interest just from my perspective what made you decide to go the youtube route rather than twitch for one, um, because I'm not a big, because I didn't do Twitch when I first started YouTube, I kind of grew my YouTube and then moved over to Twitch later on. Yep. Whereas loads of creators in Raid Anywhere seen grew both together hand in hand. Yep. So I, I felt like the trouble I had personally going over to Twitch is all of my subscribers are on YouTube and that's where they want to watch me. Yep. Yeah. So when I go over to Twitch, I do get good viewers and I appreciate everyone that watches over there. But my kind of viewers comes from like if Hell Hades wants to raid me or Ivy Lee or a smiley or somebody like that and they yeah. kind of like bless me that day but i guess yeah. that's kind of the, like if the higher one is if the higher creators are on i don't get any viewers in a yeah. sense 
Whereas with YouTube, my subscribers are watching me regardless. And mm -hmm. so it's just kind of like, and not only that, on YouTube, I like the format where everything that you just streamed about turns into a video. Yeah. yeah. So for it's people really that good. so for people that couldn't catch you on stream, they're able to watch it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And it actually comes up in recommended feeds as well. Yeah. Which I've noticed. So and you don't have to do anything to make that work. Well, so you, you, you can download the, yeah. the the sort of Twitch VOD. I know we do that a lot for um for Hell Hades and he creates like highlights and spotlights, but that's more more effort and time essentially. Where with YouTube, like as you say, that's what I enjoy about it. It's like you you basically stream. I get I find more of our regular audience, our subscribers yeah. can find it easier. Um so I th yeah, I think I we are say, seeing it. Oh, I sorry. will say, sorry, um with Twitch, I really love the interface. Like the way that it looks, the engagement, yeah. the yeah. pop-ups and all that. I feel like Twitch crushed it on that side. But I still feel like, I don't know why, I feel like YouTube is the future of streaming. And it's just something I, I really I, believe. I completely agree. I'll tell you, I'll tell you um, why, because I'm not sure if you've seen the budget that they put into YouTube Shorts and the whole campaign they're doing. Yeah. I, I, feel like, I feel like they're going to try and kick down TikTok. They're going to try and kick down Twitch and kind of make this one space where creators can monetize all content in one platform. Yeah. Um, well, there, there was yeah. a leak um, actually of a document um, where basically their plan is shorts. Um, in addition to shorts, you know how you've got all the different sections now on your channel. So you've got live streams, videos and shorts. Mm. Um, there's going to be a new one added, which is podcasts. Oh, really? Um, yeah. well, that's huge. Um, uh, so what they're actually going to do is, or what it's been leaked that they're going to be doing is creating a section uh, where you can have uh, podcast content uploaded and you can listen without uh, listen to it without video. So through the YouTube app, you'll be able to listen to podcasts without having any video attached yeah. to it. Basically, um, yeah. challenging Spotify. They, exactly, they, exactly. They, they, they know to Spotify and they've Apple got their platform. Music. They know they've got the bet the preferred platform that creators like using. So if I can do everything on one platform, why would I split my platforms, right? Yeah. So yeah, and eventually they'll understand that once all the creators decide to go, well, you know, this 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 cons, there's negatives. As with any platform, there's negatives to yeah. Twitch, there's negatives to, I don't know, the other streaming platforms that people want to use. But the con, the pros will actually outweigh the cons eventually, and people will just come along. Like we saw it originally when some of the first exclusive people left Twitch to join YouTube, the people of like Valkyrie and stuff, their yeah. viewership dropped really low. But now, because more and more creators are over in YouTube, you're seeing that their numbers are starting to go back up because effectively people are accepting that, that the reality is people aren't going on Twitch. Whereas when Mixer happened, they were like, well, it's Mixer. It's a brand new platform. There's no other reason to go to Mixer. But because YouTube is already Ninja. established. <laughs> you yeah. Know, I think is. that's what's good about it. That's what's, that's what's clever like for was, Google. Like I was saying, though, like if they just, if YouTube just switches around that interface, because when we're streaming, it's not, unless you buy like a plugin or something like that, the actual YouTube itself, like trying to do like Streamlabs OBS to YouTube, it's just terrible because you can't use Streamlabs to see your chat. You have to, use the YouTube interface, which is yeah. garbage. And it's got like a chat rate and the there's no kind of like bits or anything like that. It's just super stickers that people aren't, it's not really there for them to see properly. It's just mm -hmm. in a little icon at the bottom. Yep. And there's not really much perks going on or pop-ups in screen. Yeah. So I feel like if they just change that, I feel like we'll get a lot more YouTube streamers. But I, I do feel, think you yeah. should probably check that. I'm pretty sure that stream elements or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think they I, had an integration. I haven't they checked They have it completely. working with YouTube now. Something, to be honest, like I'll be honest, I'm not a professional streamer here. Yeah. That's my that's the running joke. You know? <laughs> even me, I, I just mainly uh, to be honest with the streams on YouTube, it's not even about finances. I just enjoy like, do you the know fun. the people that watch your videos every day that might not comment or whatever, they get a chance to kind of just speak with you and you can have a discussion and talk about stuff and read. Yeah, and it's just it's refreshing it's to me to just engage with my community that watch me on a daily basis. So, so when yeah. you do when you do stream, what sort of content is it? You you mentioned that you do CVC and it, do, do you CVC, do other stuff? Um, CVC is the main one. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it just gives me a reason to use all of my resources and everyone can just yeah, watch me yeah, do yeah. that. But um, apart from that, I just like doing sometimes the daily streams are kind of my favorite ones because I'm just doing my daily stuff so I can actually focus on the chat. Because yeah. that's like the main reason why I'm streaming on YouTube. But I do want to start looking towards like doing a takeover on a YouTube stream. And so people can see the whole process of building a clan boss team, not just this is the gear, this is the masteries, this is the team. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not really that self-explanatory. Like think about the first time we built a clan boss team. Yeah. Like, it, it was confusing, right? So going through Lengthy. that process of like putting <laughs> yeah. the gear on, putting the masteries on, why you're choosing specific ones. And even if you want to build like a Doom Tower team, like, how would you go around that, the stats? And I just want to kind of make it that kind of process of a stream, if that makes sense, of how yeah, to yeah. do something. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Uh, 
that was the thing like i was live streaming the other day and someone said to me um oh why are you bothering pushing more than 70 million on, on clan boss like that was the, that was saying what's the point there's no the point fun. to it it's like yeah you, you're right there is absolutely no rewarding yeah. value to me pushing to 100 million 120 million but finding like you said new champions that come out like white dried Nia is a good example ruella would be another good example trying to make them fit into different teams and seeing what you can do with them and how much you can push the min max in <laughs> That's, yeah, that, that, another, that's kind of another, my addiction. Another thing is, is like loads of the play base don't understand that. I'd say 90% of clans struggle to be Ultra Nightmare Daily and having like a really strong hitter that can do those 200 millions or 150 millions actually helps out their clan a lot. So yeah. sometimes, yes, for us, you have like clans that kill it in two minutes. Fair enough, 70 million. But there is, there is loads of times I've gone into people's accounts, look at like how much people are hitting before reset. And it's definitely like yeah. they're they're literally scraping the tip of the barrel just trying I, to get that. Done. I also think that these clan boss teams, which are you know using very strange unused champions and things like that, yes, on your account they may hit you know hundreds of millions. But actually, if you tone that back a bit to a um a, a more like normal account, yeah. that may be a one key team using a champion that somebody didn't even yeah. realize that they were able to put a one key team together with it just so happens when it's on your account with your gear you can push it to to, to the max but yeah. actually if somebody just toned that back a bit it's still just a standard clan boss team that they could use and, and apply to you know any account yeah. out there do you know stuff i actually mm -hmm. heard that the top two or top three places on clan boss get higher there's like a percentage no. chance extra for a sacred is that a lie it was a misunderstanding of the way yeah. that the static data was structured. So in the in yeah. the in the code, um, it's basically a, a, the way that it segments the chests. You know which yeah. one it does it by that. So they, I think back in the day, like two or three years ago, someone read that section as, oh, well, if you're in position one, you get a certain bonus. But actually, all it is is it's how it translates the the four break points for the um the the different chests. There's no, there's no myth. There's no, no, no tinfoil hat theory. <laughs> yeah. There is nothing that you get from being number one other than the bragging rights of going, Hey, look how shiny my, uh, my red dwarf does damage in. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> do I do what? think though, with like the point that, sorry, the fiction was saying, uh, around, you know, scalability of a clan boss team, like obviously myself, you, we probably have really good gear, right? We, we, we if we wanted to, we could build a seven K damage dealer champion in clan boss, probably without breaking too much of sweat. But I think since they've introduced blessings now, stats are less important. I think since they've introduced things like Demitha and mm -hmm. Helicath, you can easily like. So when I made the Myth Who comp, um, the original comp was done by Dead in his community with uh, the whole Myth here yeah. balance with Deacon, and I was like, well, if we can just get someone with a bit more damage in, it's always going to one key. And the nice thing about that Myth Who, which is what I think the reason why Bath Eaters kind of fallen down the, the rankings now in terms of a preferred team. Yeah. Batty always used to be a little bit like, well, if you don't have a Draco, you're kind of like you 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 min max in a lot to get to a one key, right? You're trying to make the man eaters yeah. really strong. You've got to work on your gear. You've got to get everything in line. Whereas with the Myth Foo and the Demitho teams and the Helicath teams, often or not, if you have the right champions or the right setup, you can one key with even average gear, right? Even if it's negative affinity. I ran it once with Anax when he was weak affinity, the main damage dealer, and it's still one keyed, right? So it's We've seen an evolution of clan boss now where accessibility to the clan boss is much higher. But what I still know is more than anything else is how people don't value it as high in terms of a priority. They're always focused on, well, I'm trying to push my dragon team or I'm trying to climb this floor and doom tower. And then yeah, I'm like, I look at their it's... account. I, one person actually told me once they get to like stage 70 on hard doom tower and they don't do ultra nightmare clan boss. Really? They Damn. had, and they couldn't do ultra nightmare clan boss. And I'm like, where yes, are you pulling uh, guys, your yeah, if you're, from? Guys, if you're doing... Clan boss is basically your bread and butter for shards and tomes in this game. Like, you're not getting yeah. legendary skill tomes or epic tomes from anywhere else unless you're doing, like, a hard floor doom, a doom Top, top, yeah, top. Top it's of the Doom place. Tower and, like, a few, like, quests here and there from uh, Milestone Rewards. But apart from that, it's like, that's your daily, like, chance yeah. of RNG to try and book up your champions, so... Don't miss out on that. Yeah. But low investment as well. Because what you've got to remember is if you want, like if you think where legendary books come from, they come from the top of Hard Doom Tower. There's normally like one or two. They come from training of training events. And then they don't come from anywhere else, right? Those are the three. You can obviously get one from a bazaar. You can probably get one from a clan shop. But yeah. generally, the places where you're investing your time are going to be the top of Hard Doom Tower and then training 
plan boss you get is the main thing. You don't have to invest any resources that you don't get for free once you've built your team. So yeah, it's just free from the plan boss is so important. It's like the most important thing anyone should do. Like I always advise people when they come into the game and they start a new account, your only focus in life is can I get to alternate with the clan boss as quickly as possible? Yeah. Have, and when I'm looking at champions to 60, it should be, what clan do I need boss. to get to alternate with clan boss? Then you yeah. can start looking at all the other stuff. The game is very good at misleading people. Like, they'll give you missions to go and yeah. you know, hit the ice golem for stage 16 to get some really useless gear for, for your account. But um, yeah, it's, it's just shocking to me how many people actually don't value or prioritize clan boss that high. Yeah, it is. It's, it's really odd. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> do you so, know what? Do you when you look at the clan boss section in the game, right? We got the great void coming out. Yeah, yeah. Um, as another clan boss, do you have any theories of what you think that might be in terms of rewards? Um, I don't really care how the boss mechanics might be as of now, but I was hoping for like at least a book shard system. Do you know how we no. get fragments? You don't think so? Be cool. But... What you got to understand about Playroom is we like currencies. Yeah. So any new system that's going to come out is bound to have a new currency. Let's face mm. it, we had clan gold. We had 3v3 that brought a new currency. We had souls that brought a new currency. Obviously, souls would require a new currency because it's a new new model, right? If anything, I think it would be a new system that they introduced with it. Maybe, you know, something to do with effect in champions or effect in factions or something of that nature. Maybe it's access to new, like a soul stone farm in place. Yeah, we, got, we got that in Hydra Buster, so hopefully they don't do that. I mean, you... we know for sure that there's a new Hydra head coming at some point in the future. To, you know, yeah. what they'll yeah. probably do is, you know, as a creator, you know, we know what happens. All of a sudden, we get told information that's happening. It's pretty big news. I think we got like what a five days heads up about the Silver Watchers. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, by the way, we just got add new faction out of thin air. Mm -hmm. um, what we'll probably find out before the end of the year, like last year, we basically had the dupe system. We thought oh, that's a pretty big release, and all of a sudden, Hydra's ready. Like we had like two weeks notice everyone was getting some t-shirts and then it's like by the way here you go guys here's hydra <laughs> the, oh fun. man do yeah. you know what I, I went downstairs the guy's knocking on my door at seven in the morning right <laughs> i opened it and i got some t-shirt that has a y on it i'm like why yeah, <laughs> like, what, what is this what is this like a circle yeah. with a y in it i had no context right and i read this piece of paper that they sent me i was like oh yeah Hydra right? hydra boss is coming out and all this we need you to do a promo code this is your clue so i've gone around searching for every creator right and i thought okay uh, at this time, I didn't know it was Hydra. They didn't tell us on the paper. They're just like, go find creators, find the clues, and guess what it is. So I've gone and I've messaged um, everybody, and no one was responding to me. And then Hell Hades reached back. He's like, yo, I got this t shirt. I was like, all right, so <laughs> Give H it a Y. And so I was like, H and a Y. And then I was saying, maybe Hydra. And he was like, yeah, potentially, because it's got the scales and stuff. But it was, it was fun, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Have any of you guys played uh, Summoner's War before? No, I played, um, what's is that? That's not Summoner's Glory, is it? I think no, I picked that one. No, no, no. I keep mixing so, those two. Some, that. Some, yeah. Summoner's War um, is a game which is very much like Raid. It's a lot older than Raid, mm. um, but the the modes and stuff that are av available in the game are very similar. Um, and they've got a mode in it which is called Raids. And I honestly think that that new um, clan boss or, or whatever it is going to be uh, could well be a take on that system. Um, now. What that is, is basically you go in, but you actually go in with your guild and there's three teams running at any given time. That'd be um, cool. So you actually, you have your team, which is taking down like one side of it. And then you have two other parts of your guild um, who have their teams, which are basically in there to to take it down as well. Um, and I honestly think... three different bosses in one, right? Is what you're saying? Well, you know, I actually thought that mechanic. Three I, teams, yeah. I thought that mechanic could be for Iron Twins, but it didn't happen. Yeah. I yeah. thought maybe both guilds could be on like either side attacking different heads. That and... would be cool. That that's would be what I awesome. thought it was going to be, and yeah. then they just turned out to be some shambles at forty percent HP. <laughs> unless you got a geomancy, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, the problem is, it's, it's like anything they release these days, they know people will quickly find the cheese strategy. So they do everything they can to reduce the cheese strategy. But then you end up in a situation where it's Rest like, great, peace, cool. Paragon. Nothing yeah, really I'll works remember. apart from <laughs> Geomancer, right? Yeah. The, that's what Hydra was the same thing, right? They kept, they kept scaling it back, scaling it back, scaling it back. To the end, what happened with Hydra is like, the only way you can deal damage is either enemy max HP, Geomancer, or burns do you know what they, they they've kind of got a concept right because they implemented uh blessings right mm -hmm. they put brimstone in the game and for me i'm not sure if you've seen the video but i did a video with no geomancer using brimstone only and it was faster than a geomancer strap well but the problem i don't the break geomancer too high now the thing, here's is, the thing the problem is with brimstone 
you need to be able to beat the boss to kind of get the resources to do the blessings. Right. So it's that kind of catch 22 where if you don't have a geomancer, you can't get the resources to get the blessing that you need to kill the boss. So on okay, Iron Twins, so... you're saying brimstone greater than geomancer. If you've got the highest star blessings and you can kind of alter with your five champions, you've got brimstone up the hundred percent of the time. So true. That because, is you're, true. B- because you're not getting hit, because the way that iron twins works is um, the more iron brand debuffs you've got on your champions, the harder you're going to get hit at doomsday machine. Yeah. But if you've got brimstone on, you're actually bypassing all of that damage so quickly that that 40% doesn't smack you as hard because but he's not, he can't get rid of the brimstone either. Can he? No, it's unremovable. That's protected. a clever idea. I've never really thought about that. That's yeah. a great idea <laughs> where you can basically effectively just like the same strategy as Jim, because the Geomancer burn yeah. strategy is don't do any debuffs, don't do any damage and hope that you don't proc as passive and then buff yourself all the time, right? You, you're yeah. speeding it up by basically injecting turn meter into the boss by people doing buffs at a decreased speed. Yeah. But if you do the reverse and just go, hey, go have a six star, like, um, or even a five star is probably pretty safe to do it, I guess. Yeah. Um, thing that's up all the time as long as you can get back to it in time before the fourth turn of cooldown that's the only thing you'd have to balance i guess is trying to yeah. make sure that the the brimstone champion can take enough turns that you don't over fill it with, with at least with geomancer you don't actually need to worry about that because the burn will probably last as long as you can extend it yeah to be um, fair i did it with one star blessings right i did it with iron brago just for like whatever he's just had it on yeah and then i did it with mithrala life bane a duchess and somebody else I just threw them in there and in two minutes, the boss was down with one star blessings. Obviously, there's that RNG of proccing it and stuff. But yeah. if, I think in the future, to kind of drop off from those Geomancer strats, Brimstone, obviously, it doesn't bypass the passive. He's still going to do it. But you're dealing so much damage. Like, I forgot the exact number, but it drops down it's, so much. It's normally, um, it should be 25% of the boss's HP, but most bosses will then reduce it by 70%, right? So it's basically yeah. like 70% of the 25% is how much you'll deal. Yeah. That's why like Spider is like 4.65 million or something versus the other bosses because they've got a bigger HP pool, right? Yeah. Um, so that's an interesting. I never would have thought to actually just abuse Brimstone in that fashion. Because it, it's kind of like the same thing, right? Because it's protected debuffs. And yeah. you know, we've said on this podcast in different places, we had a podcast like months and months ago with Senti where he was basically predicting the death of debuffs in arena because he was basically saying, unless you can guarantee and protect them they're going to get cleansed because you've yeah. got a surgeon, you've got a cleanser, you've got stone skin. Now you've got all these different effects. You've got polymorph. Now it's almost impossible to place a debuff. So we need more of these protected debuff style things because of like, this is a great example of what you can achieve if you can protect a debuff. Yeah. Because you don't need geomancer, but because if you take brimstone out of the equation, there is no solution to the Iron Twins that isn't an unkillable team that's really slow if you don't have a Geomancer. He's so dominant in that area. Yeah. Because they they don't want you to come in. Like, I know when it was on the test server, I think um, when I was talking to Hal Hades about it, he was basically, uh, you know, as we do, we talk. He gets the test save, and I'm like, oh, what is, how does the Iron Twins work? How does it Can feel? Can he get us in right? trouble again, Saf? Oh, God. <laughs> no, no rule breaking. I was asking him his opinion on yeah. what he thought, and he basically said they need to fix it because it's too easy. And I remember him saying something like creators were like one one shot in it with Ninja Solo because they just didn't really put a cap on HP burn originally. Yeah. And they obviously changed it in the test server cycle to make sure that um, there was that 50,000 HP burn cap. And you can see like they eventually limit it and limit it. And it's only because some things are just broken, like the German passive where we, we fixed it to bug fix the game and then we broke it because we actually made it worse. And then we fixed it again and then made it way too strong. So we kind of left it what it was because we, you know, we messed it up too many times. We just like, Leave it as it is. Yeah, but um, that's an interesting. That's cool. I'm gonna. I might try that later. Yeah, definitely go check out the video first and like see how it works. I will watch your video. It's in fact, get extra viewer. (laughs) We will put a link to that video in the description, guys. So if you are interested in checking it out, then uh, you can go down and and click on that. Um, on, the big on problem that... with that team, just as a sidebar for with Geomancer teams, generally tends to be because the accuracy requirements are so high, you need to run an aura, which means most people will probably navigate towards Mithrala because mm-hmm. of the aura unless you've got someone like archbishop or nama you need like a sort of a supportive based champion with an actually aura and there's not that many of them and mithrala has a habit of putting way too many debuffs out which means you can't actually keep the burn up that much to extend it because normally that like, strategy the, the, the best fastest strategy is you normally do something like an aox who's got a passive extend with yeah. the burn and you just don't do any damage because you, you bypass the passive the burn stays on and then you kill it really quickly with the Brogni passive, uh, yeah. the, the Geomancer passive. But the problem with is you have Mithrala, 
And Mithrala introduces a lot of variability because she loves poisoning. She loves Hex. I've even heard some crazy stories about some people in high-end teams taking accuracy off their Mithrala to make it easier. Oh, God. <laughs> because they don't want the debuffs. They just want her for the aura and the buffing. Yeah. Because they didn't have Archbishop. And I was like, that's mental. But that's I, would, I would have made that sacrifice on my Mithrala to, for just for Iron Twins. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. <laughs> but it's a problem yeah. that my team has, right? Sometimes it happens to me as well. Yeah. It, it fails because Mithrala just pumps out way too many poisons and way too many debuffs. You know, it's the hex debuff, the poison yeah. debuffs that you end up in this situation where you actually, the poisons, because unlike Ice Golem, the poison actually can trigger the passive. You end up causing the passive to proc, then you lose the burn just after Geomancer uses A3, and then it you take too many turns, and then as you said, the Iron Brand stacks up and you die. But it's interesting to like kind of go throw if you throw Geomancer out the window, you don't need the accuracy aura because Brimstone yeah. doesn't require accuracy. No accuracy needed. So I've so it's, everything changes. Yeah. It's just like RNG, like, can you get the soul stones? Have have you got the blessings for the right champions? Well, I do have a five star cantor I've been thinking what to do with. We could put that rare in again. <laughs> put that we could, again. Well, the rare, the rare can't wear it, can it? To be it's fair, be I, put, I got a rich off the bold six star um, legendary, right? And his wow. his, his uh, gear set is just rubbish for the Iron Twins. It's got like, it just poisons and poisons stuff. Poisons and poisons. But just because he's got a six star blessing, it became S tier for me because yeah. he could just. Just A1. Uh, just a blessing enough. Disable like, everything else. Yeah. So on, on that note, um, and doing all these weird strategies and things like that, YST, what would you like to see? added to raid i guess in in, in in the near future for me um, it has to be um some sort of clan related activity um mm -hmm. yeah obviously we've got cvc but for me that's not cvc it's just who's got the most resources yep yeah um yeah i feel like that kind of engagement of a community even if they don't want to branch out clan versus actual clan or anything like that at least put a part for clans themselves to do something between them like their own little self mini tournaments or an arena just for your clan yeah. so you can face each other weekly. That would be cool. And get stars towards like, do you know how you get the, the stars every week um, to max yeah. up for the, just little, it's nothing huge, just some sort of engagement. And I feel like even the chat box at the top is a pile of trash in game. Like, it really uses it. I was surprised no, to put really moderation bad. on it. So like, many oh, people yeah. don't even know it exists. That's the only thing really that's annoying bad. is when you're in like a global chat and all you see is this person has pulled this champion, this person has pulled this champion, this person, and you're like, please stop it. Go away. Yeah. Stop I, being I think, good. I think for such a community driven game, I feel like I would just like to see more community in the game and not have to yeah. go to external stuff like Discord to be able to chat with your peers. I agree. Because, because as many of you guys know, with clans in particular, we have clusters, right? In our Discords. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of like in their own brackets, like they talk to each other, they talk to each other. Whereas if in the game itself, you can make a cluster and have those clans in those segments, yeah. we can all talk as a community, not just in an external place yeah. like Discord. I think that's the kind of the main focus for me and you would be like that community. Yeah, thing. Cause I, I remember back in the day, I don't know if clusters still do it because um, I'm, I'm not a part of one, but I remember that uh, clusters effectively used to just hijack a channel um, because obviously you can change the channel number that yeah. you're in. Um, and there would be like, I don't know, like channel eight would be, this cluster's home yeah. that's where yeah. they go and chat and, and things like that i don't know if that's some, some people people yeah that we either. still do it i mean like 808 so that's kind of like Sweet. our little clan <laughs> thing but yeah um but yeah so um i mean i, th I think that's prob probably a, a lot of information for people to digest i guess in in today's podcast and obviously i'm uh, wary of everybody's time and i don't want to keep um you, you too before, long um, before we before we wrap up do you want to speak about the faction tournaments that's up at the moment because that's, that's really a good new. idea yeah that's I a good idea let's let's let's, last let's topic. touch on that yeah my, um, my team is currently running in stage 16 in finite 16 you're not doing 20 no well see it's, here you go guys right here's the tip if anyone is watching they think oh i can't get 20 i don't have a law the tip of these special tournaments because generally the point requirements are lower right normally a tournament's 2750 points yeah. generally with these like special rules tournaments they end it at 2100 and i think they've done it again with this tournament here stage 16 is not that bad if you just care about the tournament if you care mm -hmm. about gear obviously your odds are much lower on stage you can get four star right but for just getting the tournament done when you're at stage 16 clearing the waves is so much easier like a lot of people have been commenting about the demon spawn one in particular is like, how do you kill the wave? Yeah. How do you get there? You can't kill the waves in 21 to 25 that quickly. Yeah. Magnar is probably the best option, mm -hmm. probably maybe a candy, but ultimately you haven't got like a massive nuke. Cause like I say, you don't have like, um, I guess ethos level, unless you've got like a fully maxed out awakened AOE nuke, it's very difficult. 
But with stage 16, I can clear both ways in like 15, 20 seconds. So I'm not investing too much energy because it's still, you know, 16 energy. I'm not investing too much time and I'm still getting the tournament done just as efficiently. But okay, I may not be, be, I may not be getting the gear right. So to, to give about a bit of background context um, around these tournaments, these are the events that was voted for by the community. Yeah. Raid, Raid put it out. Um, so before sort of, I guess, jumping into the actual events itself, what, what was your, your guys' feeling of how, how this was even, I... um, how this came about, whether it is something that is good for the community to be able to pick which factions are going into each one of these tournaments or whether it backfired or whether the results was it even like what you expected it to be as the outcome? For me personally, I like the idea. I just don't like it. Personally, I don't like the way it was kind of implemented. The reason being is, right, the community can vote or whatever. Like, that's great. And I enjoy that. But the thing is, not everybody's accounts are the same. RNG might not give you champions in specific factions. Whereas if they just said to people, Corrupted Alliance, in the game, you could choose which faction you wanted to use for each of the specific ones, but you can't use them again. So then it will be a real faction games because you might be going against the demon spawn, but you're the Knights Revenant in that uh, tournament there. And for me, that would make it real faction tournaments. Whereas right now it's, do you have the best champions? Who can do the fastest run? Who's got the most energy? You're going to win sort yeah. of thing. But that even would be do, cool, actually. Do you, know in, do you know in the leaderboard itself on the tournaments, they could have had like little icons saying this person chose the Knights Revenant for this. This person using the undead. And I don't know. I feel like that would have been fun. Like it could have been like the Deadwood Jedi kind of. Sort I, of yeah, I, I prefer yeah, a more complicated well. model. I would have liked it if you only could use one champion for each faction. In that the would, see, even stuff like that, just switch it up a little bit. It would confuse people. Yeah. That's the problem. They've got to balance like people, you know, think how many posts they're going to get. It's like, well, I ran this team and I didn't get any tournament points. And it's like, yeah, because you, you didn't use the right number of champions because people are probably not paying attention right so it's more complicated but it would have been cool if it's like you can only have one from each champ faction in the alliance and then one bonus one because obviously yeah. it's five right you can basically have two from one and then one from the rest it's probably quite difficult to code and protect whereas when it's like faction driven they can just use the standard if it's in faction then qualify right yeah but actually and at least I, what i like about it is and like i think it feels like they've learned from the telerian trials which was a bit of a disaster instead of setting like weird milestones that people can't achieve, they've basically said to people, hey, we want to run a special tournament. We don't want to make the decision for you. So you, you guys yeah. can decide what you want and then let the chips lie. If you pick a really bad faction, that's your own fault, which I think is a good idea because community feels like they're getting a choice. Yeah, yeah. It's not overly complicated, but it still creates some, a little bit of a freshness. To, you know, We're mid-fusion cycle now because the fusion ends on Friday. We're, you know, probably not going to have a bit of a more of a gap I would have expected before the next fusion, like maybe two weeks rather than like a week, which is what we had last time. And um, I think it kind of gives people like a reason to keep playing the game for a bit because it's something a bit new. People go, oh, it's cool. As long as the rewards are good, yeah, people will do it. I feel like another thing that they should do is, you know, when they got the Corrupted Alliance only for the arena tournament to get the Cold Heart skin. Yep. Um, the one thing I would like to have, I know that it's going to be the year of PvP coming up, hopefully next year, with all the stuff yeah. happening at Polarium and stuff. Fingers crossed. But um, So if they had tournaments like these, I would love a kind of segment where if you're doing the tournament, you have to use Corrupted Alliance only in defense and offense, and that's the only way you get points. Because right now, let's just say I wanted to do Corrupted Alliance, and I'm in gold five or whatever, and I can't face these champions because I haven't got wants to outspeed an arbiter and stuff like that it kind of takes the fun out of it for the community for me so whereas oh, that's if, true. the problem with arena right if you haven't got a kaimar yeah. you kind of you've got a bit of a problem with this tournament because it's yeah. he'll be you're probably going to see kaimar led teams or yeah. duchess led teams right Those this, are the two. Is, this is where i'd love it to be like a separate game mode like you you want to do the corrupted alliance you want to get points for this give us a separate kind of yeah you go resource. in these pool of players yeah. yeah not not using the same classic you want to opt tokens. into a ladder yeah i think that's the easiest model to do it right you basically when the tournament pops you can opt into a special ladder yeah. which then limits all of the champions right so if you think of like a way a process could work the tournament launches it says do you want to join this tournament click join when you click join it then goes you need to set a defense for this tournament um and it limits your champion pool yeah, so you can only pick the ones from the faction, and then you can pick whatever champion you want when you go offense. Right, it's the same thing when you go and open a shadow, uh, like open a faction wars. You can't yeah. pick other factions when you go into the secret rooms. You they should do it that way, where they basically instead of having it as part of the main ladder, 
have a completely separate, unique ladder that you could get better control. Because if people don't want to participate, they don't have to be part of the problem. Yeah. And I know I, some people will go, oh, well, what if nobody joins? I think a lot of people would join. I think everyone different. would join if it was different. And I think that would make it fun because right now, like yeah. if I'm bringing in Corrupted Alliance and I'm facing a warlord or whatever, it's, it's like, impossible. It's just Unless like, what's fast the point? Kaima. Yeah. You'd it's... need like, if you want to do it properly in high-end arena, you'd probably need Kaima, Duchess, Necrat, or like so Sifi wrote us, right? You're gonna need Mifrala, the then, yeah, it's some really top tier like at least they've yeah. picked like the meta alliance. Yeah. So that's that's but it just would, I, what is it? I just think it'd be more fun if we actually face the corrupted alliance as well. Yeah. So it's corrupted versus corrupted, not me versus every faction in the game. Yeah. And for me, it just takes the fun out of it. But... I, and I, I, really I think wish... that's a really valid point. Um, yeah, I really wish they would basically make it so that you know, I know if you win the tournament, you get the champions game. Cool. I've not got a problem with that. I feel like the sidebar rewards for these tournaments should be partial fragments. So if I'm participating to get like a cold heart skin, then I, if I win the tournament, I get it outright. But if if I don't, then I have to maybe like participate in 10 different tournaments and I'll eventually get the skin. So yeah. I'm still moving towards it because I feel like this all or nothing mechanic it just puts people off. It doesn't make them engage because if I look at that thing and I'm like, do I re am I really that invested to try and get a skin that I, only one person can get? I'd be more invested if I get like five fragments every time because I'm working towards it, right? That's yeah, it. So it's the same kind of thing like months. with the Drexel blood twins, the yeah, Arbiter skin. Exactly, it's just a yeah. little milestone, something to chase, right? People yeah, will spend I agree with weeks that. doing it. Yeah. You know, you don't have to do them all the time. You could do like one a month or something. People will work towards it. But this kind of like all or nothing mechanic where either you buy the skin, you win the skin, or you don't get the skin, it feels like very like punishing. And yeah. I think there's methods where you can still make it difficult to acquire still engage and still get people engaged with it. Because at the end reward. of the day, like if it's a skin that they're not selling anyway, I don't see the issue in just absolutely giving it in a way of tournaments. And because right now, like for me anyway, I'm I'm not sure how you guys feel about this, but I always see soul stones in replacement of books in these events now. Yes. And essence I feel, more than book stones. Yeah. Essence and stuff. So I feel like that's diluting another problem such as the books from because that was kind of a main source of books for like loads of players like yeah they'd push a tournament just to get that legendary tome at the top whereas right now you might see um 10 essence or something so generally yes. i think the the tournaments are okay for books the artifact enhancements the one i'm finding is more punishing they tend to like stick in essence in the artifact enhancement mm. and i also don't like i have no problem if they take an epic book out and replace it with essence but five essence is not equivalent to an epic book. Yeah, that's like, they need 20. to make it worth yeah worthwhile to at least buy a champion at one star. Like five doesn't yeah. even get me a, a one star epic. Like, yeah. what can I do with five essence? Like, I need three hundred tier two essence to get a six star perfect. Yeah, song. So, like if you're gonna awesome. do it, fine, but make sure it's at least equivalent, and then yeah. don't do it all the time. I don't mind that they're changing up and offering different rewards, but yeah, I agree. Like, there's a problem where potentially you're gonna end up in a situation where clan boss is even more important right because clan boss is the source of books and shards if you don't do clan boss you're not going to even get them from events anymore so yeah it's true awesome okay well let's wrap it up there guys but thank you so much um i do apologize i, I missed that uh topic i forgot we were going to talk about that so thanks <laughs> no, it's not a reminder um, at the end <laughs> yeah jump, jumping yeah. in there worse yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, if you are still watching, thank you so much for staying tuned. If you do enjoy the podcast, please do subscribe, like all that good stuff. Make sure that you head on over to YST's channel and check out his stuff. Um, links will be in the description and all that. And we will see you in another podcast very, very soon.